hill. It's killer. All right, Falcons, we are on location in Silverton at Loco Ono Barbecue with my old friend, Mindy. Uh, I met her years ago when she was a teacher at Colton High School and she was doing Pro Start. Uh, and I used to go out and do visits with her. So thank you for having us. Absolutely. Just gonna uh, go through a, a little bit of info and then hopefully we're gonna get a little tour and see inside of uh, what she's got going on. So I guess the, the first question I have is, how long have you owned Loco Ono? Loco Ono, we went into official business in uh, July of 2017. Um, but the concept itself started close to 15 years ago because my husband and our business partner Gigs for friends, um, and it, it just kind of grew. It's funny how it, yeah. it's always like, oh, you're really good cook. You should open a business. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I wasn't aware that you had a brick and mortar, but there's a whole other story to that that we can maybe talk about later. But yeah. uh, what are the advantages you feel of having a mobile uh, a mobile truck versus an actual brick and mortar? Um. And the disadvantages. Yeah, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, a disadvantage is just really trying to find a good location to put it. Um, not only location, 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 but then permitted wise, are you allowed to be there, can you function, because every city is different. Um, so that that was an issue for us. Um, it's, it's more flexible. Um, it's mobile, but if you can see it, it's huge. Um, so we don't like to move it. It's pretty stationary. Um, but as far as like, I'm going to link it right to the pandemic and to this. So the plan was to be in the brick and mortar by now, but this has given us so much more flexibility because we get to serve here. And we don't have to deal with the inside and all the regulations that come with that. Um, we're open air, people are lots more comfortable coming here, um, and we're not as restricted because we're open air, and so it's just been a, a blessing in that regard. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, because mobile, I, we've constructed all of this. Yeah. So it's, uh, um, I guess you got more into it in some ways than, than others, um, because we're not in a pod that was pre-built that provided seating, and so we had to provide all of it. But, cool. Yeah. All right, so here's the tough question. People always ask me, what's your favorite thing to make? But I'm going to ask you, why barbecue? Um, not my personal choice. <laughs> that was... Uh, the guys before me, so my husband loves to barbecue, and um, and they're good at it. So they started at a barbecue competition, kind of a friendly little one, uh, one, and so it kind of blossomed from there. Cool. And uh, it's people like it. Cool. So. All right. So uh, based off of your menu, if you had to enter one thing into a competition, what would it be and why? Um, I actually had to ask my husband this question, and it would probably be ribs or brisket. Okay. Yeah. All right. I had the brisket, and it was fantastic. Uh, I have a picture of it. It's not a great one because I was gobbling it, so <laughs> maybe we'll get a better picture that I can uh, link to the video. Okay. Um, and then how about any uh, accomplishments in your culinary career that you're super proud of, uh, that you're... I personally, I, I've kind of struggled with that because like, I don't, I don't know. I think honestly, she's on the floor. Okay. Um, so, and we can meet her later, but Sammy was one of my students. She entered my first class as a freshman and uh, she competed in Skills with Bay. She competed in Pro Start with me. Um, and the joy of watching her be a very shy, quiet, very unsure of herself person. To, she actually went to the Art Institute and got a degree in baking history um, and has worked in the field probably in my opinion not to her passing um, and it just everything aligned that she moved to Silverton and I was able to tell her and it's been a blessing for me as far as having somebody that I've trained so young and she knows me and she knows my style she knows what I expect and, and so, and trust, and right? Absolutely. And, and that's been a huge part as far as employees, yeah. Nice. Uh, let's see. Past experience. 
what sort of things that did you do in your past that helped you uh, feel like you're running this the way it should be run? Being successful. Yeah. Um, I worked in the food industry when I was young, when I lived back east, so I think that experience helped me have a, an understanding. I did a lot of catering gigs through that. Um, so, and then just teaching and doing some catering there. I think for me, you know, when I, people are always like, why don't you open a thing? Well, I don't want to, I'm already married. Uh, Amen. You're, right, so you're working probably ridiculous hours. Uh, and we won't even get into that. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure where I was going. It'll hit me in a second. Well, but. I can I tag onto that. Is This is something that I've wanted to do. Like, I want my own catering business. I wanted to do this since I was back east when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew from the hours that I did then that I did not want to do that with family. Yeah. Because I didn't want to give up my time with my young ones. So your kids are all grown up and adults. gone. Okay, and, and then um, you yeah, retired? I retired from teaching, and you know, it was just time to kind of do this for us. Do they still have a program over there? Oh, uh, they do. Yeah. Nice. Oh, cool. Uh, let's see, what do you wish uh, that you knew more about before actually getting into the business? I wish I'd paid more attention to my accounting and business law classes. Okay. Um, I took them just because I thought I should, but not because I knew I had a purpose for them. Sure. Um, QuickBooks. No, I don't. Yeah. It was running the books, and um, thank goodness I have good friends who help me. But yeah, that's the part. I don't like it. I can do it. I'm smart enough to handle it, but it's not it's a fun at part all. Of it. Yeah. How are we doing on time, cameraman? We're good. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. Share with us if you want uh, a cooking fail. <laughs> that you learned from. That you learned from. Have any. No. Um, no. I think the biggest one that I can think of, like not specific, but just tiny. I mean, timing is the biggest issue, and then you're dealing with meats that don't always cook at the same rate. Right. You're dealing with temperatures outside and the winds and the sure. fire and um, so that's that's the thing that I feel failure at uh, is ready. sometimes the closest you just have to control. Sure. Yeah, which makes it difficult because you still have a timeline you gotta get done. And, okay. Yeah. And is Casey is this Casey? Casey, Casey yeah. is he your pit he's your pit he's boss? Our pit boss, yeah. Cool. So he can maybe tell us about smoke and wind and all of that. Oh, hey, sure. hey. Uh, let's see. What have you done differently during this pandemic to keep local Ono running? I've seen the steady flow of people in and out. So what have you done um, that's helped? Well, being the food cart is what helped us. Yeah. Because we didn't have to get shut down out of there. So we never quit. You just kept going. We have, we have continued through it all. Um, and that's been, and we also got an influx of a customer base because other places were closed. And then I think that's all true. I mean, yeah. people have continued because they found us because out of necessity. So, um, yeah, we use Facebook and we use social media to put it out there. But I know for me, when uh, I'm going to say the preppers, when they went crazy and were buying up all the toilet paper and everything else, there was no meat. How did that affect you guys? Did you guys have a bit of a surplus or no? No, no. and it, it was rough. And beef was the big one, and um, it was difficult to find. Um, our business partner basically drove all over the country. We went to the purveyors um, to get in contact. I know that I know for one, we have one customer that I haven't seen in quite a while because we changed our directive because of what we could get, and he didn't like it as much. Mm -hmm. So um, it is back to normal. Um, it's not as difficult to find. Prices are pretty much back to normal, but we had to hike our prices and figured we wouldn't even sell for it. Um, but even at 20 plus, people bought it. Yeah. Which is crazy. It's great. So, yeah. Well, I was going to ask about um, the mobility of this, but you already answered that. And then I was going to ask something else that you answered. Oh, I was going to ask about social media, but you're using that to market and advertise. And yeah, and mainly Facebook because that's probably the platform I'm most com comfortable with. I try Instagram. Um, I just don't use it as much. Sure. So. sure. Um, and as far as the rest of it, um, like delivery systems, we looked into that. We didn't like how they inflated our prices and we didn't have control. So, so do you guys have like Grubhub and that sort of stuff in Silver Center? There are some types here, okay. but I just, you sure. know, when they take our menu and change all our prices, and it just, oh. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I got yeah, it. I got it. it. So. Cool. Awesome. Well, that's what I got. We're going to uh, reset and we're going to do a little tour uh, around and check out the space and that'll be our thing. Thank you.
All right, Falcons, we are going to get an inside look of the trailer of Loco Ono, and our friend Samantha is going to give us uh, a preview of the tight quarters of a trailer. All right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have the cold food, the salads, the salad toppings, the cheeses for the mac and cheese. Here's where we make the mac and cheese. This pan. And I had the mac and cheese, and it is rib sticking. It's it good. It's so good. We use this mac base with the smoked gouda and the cheddar cheese. Over here, we have our flat top where we heat up all of our meats. We have beans here. Pulled pork is usually ready because a lot of people like that meat. We have the fridge here. We have drinks and the prepared salads and then our prepared meat. And then, uh, oh, three compartment sink over yeah, here? We have a three compartment sink with the sprayer. We place our dishes up here. We got our cash drawer right we have here. A sanitizing bucket <laughs> so we can always stay clean. Perfect. Extra bugs, some silverware, our famous sauces that Miss Shelton makes. Who makes the sauces? Miss Shelton does. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. And the phone is ringing, so I'll let you get that. Thank you. All right, guys, so Casey is going to show us uh, one of the processes that they take uh, into consideration every time they're doing ribs here at Loco Ono. All right. So here's the top baby back ribs. And this is the underside. And on the underside of every rack of ribs, there's a skin piece of membrane. It's called silver skin. And this, when it's on, when the pig's alive, it helps hold the ribs in place. Uh, but to cook, you're going to want to peel this off. Because this, if you leave it on and cook it, is going to be a fight to get your ribs uh, cut apart when they're finished. Just that membrane is so, so strong and tough. Serves a purpose, but for cooking, every time, you just peel it off. Man, you make that look really easy. How many of these have you done? <laughs> I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. Hundreds. Nice. Hundreds, if not more. Awesome. And then what's your what's your smoke time on uh, on baby backs? These will go in for seven thirty to eleven. Three and a half hours. Okay. Three, three and a half hours. Perfect. And what was that little bit that you trimmed off the end of the rib there? Oh, uh, just some, just some, just some a little bit of scrap. I just like a little bit cleaner cleaner in. Is that for presentation or does that just dry out when you cook it if you leave it on? I like it for presentation. Nice. Yep. Cool. That's awesome. It. These are ready to season up. Nice. And you do a, a wet rub on these guys or? A little bit of olive oil, yeah, and then a dry rub. Perfect. Right on. Thank you, sir. So this is one of the smokers and this is, what do you guys do? Ribs in here? Brisket? We, do, we can do anything. Anything? Yeah. Nice. Camera, go stand over there so we can get a perspective. That's a big smoker, y'all. And what does this run on? Uh, wood. Wood? Yeah. What kind of wood do you guys use? Uh, oak and apple. Oak and apple. And where do you get that from? Sherry. Um, it's all local source. All local. Um, nice. A lot of it, like a lot of the cherry wood, we have this, you know, we have friends that want a tree spell, and my husband will want a tree, and then collect the wood. Nice. So, Nice. What is what does a piece of equipment like this cost? We have got most all of our equipment um, auctions or okay. Craigslist. That those are spending. So. You can Google the price of those guys and see how much it it costs to actually get uh, some of this equipment and get set up. Yeah. Anyhow, we're gonna head inside, take a quick tour of the future local Ono. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Here we go. So it's so licensed to the warehouse. So we have storage in here. Mm -hmm. um, cheese sauce, vegetable sodas, our, our meats are in here. Um, Little dish pit. dish pit. Bathrooms over here. Awesome. Hand washing station, which we just got installed two of these this year. So we're pretty excited about that. Well, I am anyways. Yeah. And this is uh, a work in progress. This was at one point, what was it? A pizza? Pizza Figaro's. 
Okay, so Figaro's. Oh, and I guess this is where the pizza ovens were at one point. So part of the issue is that the hood needed for a pizza oven is Oh, so, okay. When we first looked, we were like, oh, cool, a green hood. And then, oh, crap, wrong green. Okay. So, this is, um, so it's just on ventilation, but you know, we had to get a new hood. That'll have to go up at a tune of, uh, best probably got us 30 grand. Oof. Um, so this, this was their dough room. Okay. So this was all enclosed. We had ripped this out. Um, a bathroom will go here, out to where it needs to be, and this will be a pantry area. Nice. Um, I'm going to switch off the camera. And I'm just going to, for you guys that don't know, you students that don't know, Figaro's, whenever you guys go to Costco and you walk by where they're making the pizzas, this room that, that uh, Mindy was talking about, they would make dough and they had plexiglass windows and you could come in and order your pizza here at this counter. These are probably little it's coolers, yeah. uh, old school coolers with wood doors on them, but uh, you would order your pizza and you could watch the people make dough and they were all covered in flour and it was a whole experience. Back when I was a kid, right next door was an alligator video, so we'd go and rent VHS tapes and then we'd come and get a pizza that was a take and bake uh, and take that home and have movie and pizza night. If we were lucky, my mom would let us like rent a Nintendo cartridge along, uh, along with it. So, this is our spot. Can you come over here and thank you very much? Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, Falcons, stay well. We'll see you around. Cool.